between fault prevention and fault protection. They're two distinctly different things because they avert fault-related injuries in different ways. Fault prevention systems are barriers or devices that prevent you from falling. So we're talking about preventive measures, such as guardrail systems, floor and roof wall covers, and fall restraint systems. If you use them properly, you simply can't fall. Fall protection systems are devices that help protect you from injuries if you do fall, like a safety net or a fall arrest system. So when you're working six feet or more above a lower level or objects below you, you'll need either fall prevention, such as a fall restraint system, or fall protection, such as a fall arrest system. The six foot rule may or may not apply to work on ladders. So check with your company and each facility about requirements concerning ladders. The other possible exception to this rule is when you're working from a scaffold. You'll still need either a fall prevention or fall protection system, but check with your supervisor about the fall protection distance requirements for your company and for each facility. They're generally somewhere between 6 and 10 feet for scaffolds. Our focus today is on fall restraint systems for preventing falls and fall arrest systems for protecting you if you do fall. These systems are two of the most frequently used fall prevention and protection systems in the mechanical construction industry, but they're also the most challenging ones to use effectively. You just saw one of our fitters fall from a scissors lift. Unfortunately, that still happens way too often. He was close to the work, but just not quite close enough. He needed to extend his reach just a little bit, so without thinking about it, he stepped up on the top rail reached out a little too far, and, well, he couldn't stop himself from falling. That's where a fall restraint system would have worked really well. It would have stopped it from stepping up on the top rail, and it would have prevented that fall. Fall restraint systems aren't required on all scissor lifts when top rail, mid rail, and tow boards are in place, and the gate or chain is properly latched. However, it's a great safe work practice when the lift is designed for it, it just helps workers keep both feet on the work platform. A fall restraint system consists of a full body harness, the connector that's long enough to allow freedom of movement, but short enough to prevent a fall from occurring, and a sturdy anchor. No matter where you use a fall restraint system, pay close attention to selecting the proper system components, proper adjustment of the harness, and connecting to a proper anchor. If you're unsure about safe use of any part of the system, check with your supervisor before you use it. There are different ways to put a full body harness on. It really depends on the style of the harness, but you'll always want to start by lifting it up by the D-ring on the top back of the harness. The D-ring you're looking for is held in place by a D-ring pad and attached to the shoulder straps. Lift it up so that it's not touching the ground and make sure that none of the straps are twisted. From there, you'll be able to see what style of harness you have and the easiest way to put it on. Make sure the harness is properly adjusted at the shoulders, legs, and chest. This is critical every time you put it on. So we'll spend some time on proper adjustments and inspection when we go over fall arrest systems. Since you won't be arresting a fall with a fall restraint system, be sure to select a lanyard or a self-retracting lifeline that will prevent you from reaching an unprotected edge. But be sure not to use a self-retracting lifeline for fall restraint when you're working in an aerial lift, because it wouldn't stop you from climbing up on and falling from the lift's top rail. When you're using a fall restraint system from an aerial lift, most of them have built-in anchors. But it's always important and required that you get proper training on how to safely use the lift you'll be working from. Be sure to carefully follow all of the manufacturer's recommendations regarding fall restraint and other safety issues. And what about getting to those hard to reach areas safely? Well, there are a number of ways you can safely access those difficult to reach work areas, but each situation may require a different approach. 
Sometimes you'll have to use a scaffold, and in other situations, only a ladder will work. But there is newer technology available, like this vertical access attachment. It allows you to safely access narrow overhead areas that can't be accessed from a lift by itself. It even has side rails to help prevent you from falling. The rails are adjustable for additional access, and a safety feature ensures that lift operation is disabled while the rails are lowered. This rig is really helpful when you need to get up between pipes and ducts. Just be sure to follow the manufacturer's recommendations regarding fall prevention and protection when using a vertical access attachment or any other equipment. He's going to be okay. He was using a fall arrest system when he fell, and he was using it correctly. Fall arrest systems limit the distance you can fall, absorb and distribute much of the force created by the fall, and help prevent you from striking the ground or other objects below. A personal fall arrest system includes a full body harness, a shock absorbing lanyard or self-retracting lifeline, and an appropriate anchor. All parts of the system must be compatible to ensure that you are well protected. But it's not enough to just have a compatible system. It needs to be in good condition and used correctly, including proper adjustments. This is true regardless of whether you use the system for fall restraint or fall rest. Start by inspecting your full body harness. Look for obvious defects, such as burns, cuts, tears, frays, abrasions, mold, broken stitching, missing grommets, or any other damage. Also, check the harness hardware, including the D-rings, buckles, back pad, and loop keepers for burrs, cracks, wear, corrosions, or any other defects. Inspect lanyards and self-retracting lifelines in the same manner, including the snap hooks, and don't forget to inspect the anchors. They get worn and damaged too. If you find any damage at all, or if you're just not sure about it, don't use it. Immediately follow your company's procedures for taking defective equipment out of service and get yourself a new one. Getting the right fit is critical for your safety. The harness has to be worn and adjusted properly to protect you if you do fall. That means the chest strap has to be buckled and pulled snug so you won't come out of the harness during a head-first fall. Both leg straps have to be properly positioned and buckled, so you won't come out of the harness feet first and hang yourself by the chest strap on your way down. And the leg straps have to be adjusted so they fit snugly. Don't forget, if you fall, we're talking about 900 pounds of force. If the leg straps aren't properly adjusted, it's especially painful for men, but it's also painful for women. There are fall arrest harnesses made specifically for women, so they can be sure of a correct fit too. To get the proper fit, start by adjusting the shoulder straps to raise the entire harness to the right position on your body. Then pull the leg straps snug. You should be able to fit your flat hand between the strap and your leg, but don't have them any looser than that. The sub-pelvic strap, or seat sling, has to be positioned so it will work just like a seat if you do fall. If this part of the harness isn't worn correctly, the leg straps will cut off the circulation in your legs while you're hanging there, waiting to be rescued. And remember, a safe rescue may take a little longer than you think, so you want that seat sling in the right place. Be sure to check it when you put your harness on, and make sure it doesn't get pushed up into the small of your back. It should be positioned at the base of your butt, There is only one fall arrest B-ring on your harness. That's the one positioned in the middle of your back, just above your shoulder blades, when the harness is properly adjusted. All the other D-rings on the harness are for positioning, not fall arrest. To keep yourself protected, never attach the lanyard to anything but that one and only D-ring that's designed specifically for fall arrest. There are three different types of connectors used to attach the D-ring to a suitable anchor point. This one is a standard six-foot lanyard used only with fall restraint systems. 
You can't use it as part of the fall arrest system because it won't absorb enough of the force of a fall to keep you from getting hurt. The second type of connector is the shock absorbing lanyard. They're great when you're working up high enough, but there has to be enough fall clearance to arrest your fall before you hit the ground or some other object below. Fall clearance depends on the height of the anchor point, the length of the lanyard, the pre-fall distance, which can never be more than six feet, the deceleration distance, and the height of the worker. Be sure to calculate the fall clearance carefully if you're choosing a shock-absorbing lanyard. For example, if a six-foot worker is going to be using a six-foot shock-absorbing lanyard, and the lanyard is anchored to prevent a free fall of more than six feet, you need to add six feet for the height of the worker, six feet for the length of the lanyard, three and a half feet for the stretching of the shock-absorbing lanyard when the fall occurs, and a safety factor of three feet. That comes out to a fall clearance of 18 and a half feet. If he's going to be working any lower than that, he'll have to lose the shock absorbing lanyard and switch to our third connector option, the self retracting lifeline. It doesn't get nearly as much fall clearance, and it allows you to move around uncontested. And if you do fall, it will lock up and stop you before you drop more than a couple of feet. However, you do have to be concerned about swinging into objects if you get too far away from the anchor point. Stay as close to the anchor point as possible, and don't put yourself in a position where a fall would swing you into a stationary object. Once you've chosen the right connector, you need to ensure that you're anchored to a suitable anchor point, at shoulder height or higher. The anchor point needs to be able to withstand 5,000 pounds of downward force for each person connected to it, or it must have a safety factor of 2 to 1. To use the 2 to 1 safety factor option, the complete personal fall arrest system must maintain a safety factor of at least 2 to 1 and be under the supervision of a qualified person. For example, if you're using a shock absorbing lanyard or self retracting lifeline, the most force you would incur would be around 900 pounds. So, using a safety factor of 2 to 1, and assuming no one else is connected to the same anchor, you need an anchor point that can safely support 1,800 pounds of downward force. So how do you know if an anchor point is strong enough? Think structurally. Anchor points like I-beams, support columns, and solid cured concrete ceilings come to mind. Don't gamble on your anchor point though. In many facilities, an engineer or another qualified facility person will help you identify suitable anchor points. If you're not sure about it, check with your company's designated fall prevention and protection systems competent person before you connect an anchor to it. You also need to carefully select the anchor you'll be attaching to your anchor point. If you're going to attach to a beam, you can use sling style anchors or horizontal or vertical beam anchors. Just be sure you don't make the very common but extremely dangerous mistake of using your lanyard as an anchor, unless it's specifically designed by the manufacturer for that purpose. Don't choke it off around a beam or any other anchor point. Doing so weakens the sling, puts excessive pressure on the vulnerable snap hook gate, and subjects the lanyard to cuts, abrasions, and other damage. When a structural beam or support column isn't an option, you may be able to use a concrete anchor as long as the concrete is at least 3,000 PSI, completely solid, and completely cured. When you're installing concrete anchors, be sure to carefully follow the manufacturer's installation instructions. And one more thing about fall arrest systems. If your system has deployed to arrest a fall, take the harness, lanyard, or self-retracting lifeline and anchor out of service immediately. In other words, if you're in a fall, replace it all. Follow your company's procedures for taking defective equipment out of service. As part of your company's overall fall prevention and protection plan, there will be a fall rescue plan in place. But it gets uncomfortable pretty quickly when you're hanging from a harness. It's very dangerous physically, too. Your blood pools in your legs and can't be efficiently pumped back through your circulatory system. 
due to the pressure from the leg straps and with old gravity. So while you're waiting to be rescued, you need to take some tension off the leg straps. If you have a suspension trauma strap, you can simply stand up to release the tension around your legs. If you don't have the strap, lift your knees into a sitting position so that your thighs are horizontal or slightly elevated above your pelvis. Every few minutes, pump your legs vigorously like you're riding a bicycle. Then bring your knees back up into the sitting position. Keeping yourself from incurring a fall-related injury is a lot easier than it seems. Just remember, if you're six feet or more above a lower level or objects below you, you'll need either a fall prevention or a fall protection system. The most commonly used systems in our industry are fall restraint and fall arrest systems. A fall restraint system prevents situations where you can fall. A fall arrest system protects you from injury if you do fall. You have complete access to all of the fall restraint and fall arrest systems equipment you need to perform your work safely. If you have any questions, Talk to your company's designated fall prevention and protection systems competent person. By now, you should have a good idea for how and when to use these systems. So let's leave you with two thoughts. When a fall occurs, it happens in seconds. And the life you save by using the proper fall prevention or protection system is yours.